Welcome to USAID's Kitchen Sink, a food loss and waste podcast. I'm your producer, Nika Larian. 30 to 40% of the food that is produced is either lost or wasted, contributing to a global food crisis with over 800 million going to bed hungry. Listen on as USAID experts speak with researchers and development professionals to explore solutions to this critical issue that demands a kitchen sink approach. When it comes to climate, food security, and food system sustainability, we have no time to waste. Thank you for joining us for the Food Loss and Waste podcast. This episode will explore partner solutions to reducing food loss and waste engaging micro, small, and medium-scale businesses with the Feed the Future business drivers for food safety. This podcast is hosted by USA Research Community of Practice subgroup on food loss and waste, and will feature interviews with subject matter experts to explore the implications of and approaches to addressing food loss and waste. My name is Lourdes. I am a senior advisor in the Center for Nutrition Food Safety Division. Today, I'm leading this timely conversation with Dr. Thoric Siderstrom from Food Enterprise Solutions, our partner implementing the program Business Drivers for Food Safety. Welcome, Thoric. Before we begin, please tell us about you and your work. Thank you, Lourdes. Uh, uh, as you mentioned, my name is Thoric Siderstrom. I'm the Director for Research and Learning for Food Enterprise Solutions, which is implementing the Feed the Future Business Drivers for Food Safety project. And it is focused on engaging with private sector businesses to, uh, to help them, assist them to uh, adopt safer food handling practices so that consumers, especially in local markets, have access to a greater access to affordable, nutritious, and safe food. So uh, we're about the midway point of the project. And uh, even though the focus is on food safety, food loss is a concomitant uh, sort of result of our activities as well. So happy to speak to that today with you. And thank you again for agreeing to speak with us. And let us dig into the topic right away. So let's talk about the role of the private sector in reducing food loss and waste. And tell us more about how FES concept of growing food businesses work. Yes, happy to do that. Uh, the private sector uh, is a big bucket and it includes, uh, you know, even global uh, food businesses that are vertically integrated and have international scope. and. Uh, that's not the focus of our, our intent at all. We're working with small to medium food enterprises that have a, uh, as part of their business model, a uh, goal to grow, right? And to serve the customers in their markets, usually local, national, maybe even regional markets with uh, better food. And so uh, producing that food in safer ways and uh, also uh, understanding the cost to their business of food loss as well that could be mitigated through the adoption of, of better food handling practices is a key focus of what we do. And so uh, uh, by helping businesses understand that uh, they're losing revenue by not addressing food loss is a, a key activity of ours. Perfect, thank you. What are the challenges for growing food businesses to adopt practices to reduce food loss waste? And please tell us about the opportunities as well. Yes, I think one of the, the biggest challenges is just the definition of the term, right? Uh, it's something that has uh, become part of the global awareness, especially in relation to climate change, but as the population grows and we're seeing all the uh, kinks in the global supply system uh, because of COVID and post-COVID, uh, we're keenly aware of the issue of food loss, right? That food, uh, and it signals inefficiencies in the supply chain, right? In the value chain, something's not working right, that uh, that food is, is not reaching the end consumer in an efficient and safe uh, way. 
So uh, one of the key constraints that we have found is that, uh, first of all, a lot of businesses don't measure it. They have, when you ask them, uh, do you have food loss? First of all, they don't understand the term, right? So it's a, it's a term that we need to define and operationalize with them and, and spend some time talking about with them because it's just not something that they uh, deal with or not, they deal with it, but they don't necessarily measure it, right? And if you don't measure it, then how can you act upon it, right? They don't have a sense of how much uh, revenue that they are potentially foregoing. So we found in, in Senegal, when we uh, started uh, engaging with businesses on this topic, uh, only one out of all the businesses that we were working with actually track it, right? And this was a dairy industry where the margins are very thin and the volumes are very high. And so if they have significant loss in that uh, value chain, it's uh, it hits their bottom line quite severely. But other businesses, uh, they re redirect a lot of the food that's unfit for human consumption to animal consumption. So they still get revenue, but it's uh, suboptimal, right? It's not what they could uh, get if they were to uh, protect it and make sure it gets to uh, human consumers, right? And then we also found a lot was going into compost fertilizer, and that's sort of a third tier down where the food does go. So for them, it's not loss, right? It's uh, still generating revenue, but uh, not as much as it could if, if it were uh, uh, preserved and uh, protected and uh, went into the market system. The other big loss is uh, to consumers themselves, not just the business, because it does reduce the supply of affordable, nutritious, and safe food to, to consumers. And that's a big uh, cost to the overall nutrition of a, of a country. Not necessarily a business cost, but it is a social cost. No, that's an excellent point. And I think this is really a good segue to talk more about the opportunities and why work with growing food businesses. What's the way forward for growing growing food businesses to reduce food loss and waste? Yeah, no, that's a good question. Uh, because uh, what we have seen and what the literature seems to support too is that uh, businesses incorporate food loss into their overall sort of budgetary calculations, right? It's just a cost of doing business, right? They expect to to lose a certain percentage of their food as it moves through the supply chain. And we see this especially in, in the highly perishable fruits and vegetable market. There's approximately 50% loss, right? From, from the farm to the end consumer, uh, approximately half doesn't uh, reach, reach the market in a, in a, in a safe and edible, edible way. So uh, recognizing that and, and demonstrating to businesses that there are cost-effective uh, food handling practices, right? That they could adopt uh, and that the benefit of adopting them is greater than the cost, right? So this issue of benefit cost analysis in simple ways that they can understand we're also exploring how can we digitize it. So the protocol we've developed some measurement tools that businesses can uh, can adopt, and uh, we've learned to simplify those because if you make it too onerous, then they're like, eh, don't want to do it because I've got other things to do. Right? I'd rather be generating new customers or finding new markets rather than tracking food loss. Right? So th there are opportunity costs to everything and they're real costs, right? So if it requires refrigeration, if it requires things that are capital expenditures for small, medium uh, sized enterprises, those could be real, real constraints. But if you can introduce some very practical, low cost uh, and easy to implement uh, practices that a business could do, that could significantly reduce their food loss, then the, the uh, probability of uptake is going to be much greater, right? So what we're trying to do is document and learn and understand from uh, businesses and listen to them carefully, uh, what are their realities and, uh, uh, and share with other practitioners and perhaps even create a community of practice of 
people working in this space, right? So that we can share information in our different theaters of operation where we're working around the world uh, about what works, what doesn't work, what are the best practices, and uh, how do we disseminate those to businesses, right? Make it easy for them to, uh, to understand, to measure, and then act upon food loss within their, within their businesses. Sorry, you know, we can talk about this topic for hours, but unfortunately today we need to end here. Thank you for your time and for your work with a segment of the private sector that is really key to reducing food loss and waste. We look forward to learning more about FES and business drivers for food safety and good luck with your project. Thanks so much and thanks for inviting me. And I look forward to future discussions and learning more. You, This uh, podcast series is very helpful, I think, to everybody that's working on this topic. Thank you very much. Thank you for tuning in to USAID's Kitchen Sink. This podcast was produced by Nika Larian and is organized by the USAID Food Loss and Waste Community of Practice co-chairs, Ahmed Kablan and Anne Vaughn. Additional thanks goes to Feed the Future, the U.S. government's global food security initiative, and the USAID Center for Nutrition.